Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the book of Revelation by the Apostle John. We're going to do something just uh, kind of a fun wrap up here. We're going to look at a little uh, summary timeline and uh, just to kind of keep things focused, uh, we ended up with uh, a total of 51 lessons and uh, 720 hours of study to get through the book of Revelation. And that's uh, pretty quick, really. I mean, 720 hours sounds like a lot, but that's really, that's pretty quick. And uh, 50 lessons for the 22 chapters. 51. Let's take a look at this timeline. If you look at it, it's going to be left to right, and there's a top and a bottom. <clears throat> to get it on one page, I did a top and a bottom. But if you look at the, the top row, to keep it in context, we be begin with AD 33, the advent of Christ's teaching and crucifixion. After that came the resurrection and the ascension and by the ascension we believe to the right hand of the Father in the position of Kyrios Lordship over heaven and earth. Then the Spirit was delivered on Pentecost and Pentecost began the church age. <clears throat> now once we get to the Pentecost the next large block is the seven seals but we've already mentioned it many many times the visions in the book of Revelation are a series of stacked visions it's not a single timeline it's not a single chronology it's a it's a series of stacked visions they all fall under the seven seals the seven seals get further explication after they've been revealed and they get revealed as three and a half years of trumpets and three and a half years of bowls. Now the church age <clears throat> runs through the first three and a half years of trumpets. Uh, it is, from Revelation, it's obvious that the church goes through the tribulation period because the church has the role, notice I've got their church as prophet. Church has a role of prophet. I believe myself, and you can form your own opinion, I believe we're in the three and a half years of trumpets now. And that just stands for a set period of time, but it doesn't mean exactly three and a half years. But I believe we are in the age of tribulation uh, from a worldwide perspective. I mean, we enjoy tremendous blessings and freedoms in the United States, but on a worldwide scale, I believe we are in the age of tribulation. Therefore, we have a imperative need to become the prophet. The church needs to exist as prophet in these days. And that means things like preaching and teaching the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation should not be tucked away and hidden in the Southern Baptist Convention. It should be preached. It should be taught. Church becomes prophet. Now, I do believe that uh, when you get to uh, chapter 15, you get to the rapture chapter. And uh, you can go back to those lessons and review them, but I believe this because I don't believe that the church goes through the the bowls, the, the three and a half years of bowls the trumpets are tribulation but the severity of the bowls I don't believe the church will go through so from my study I feel like the wrath of God will not be 
directed toward the church. The church will be raptured before the wrath begins. The severe tribulation, the severe tribulation of wrath. That's the way I should word it. The church is raptured before the severe tribulation of wrath. And that will ultimately end up in Satan being bound. At the end of the bowls of wrath, we come to the second coming of Christ. Remember the saints return with Christ. And there will be a 1,000 year reign on earth of Christ with his new kingdom. And we learned that there are two resurrections. Before the thousand year reign, there is the resurrection unto life for the saints, for the elect. Then there will be the thousand year reign of Christ with the saints who will have roles and ministry in that thousand year reign. Then there's the resurrection unto damnation. And the two resurrections come from John 5.29. The author of the book of Revelation is John the Apostle. The author of the Gospel of John is John the Apostle. John 5.29 needs to correspond with any teaching on the second coming. After the resurrection unto damnation, believers will enjoy everlasting reign. You've got the white throne judgment. Unbelievers will be recipients of second death. The lake of fire, we were told, equals second death. That is, we were given the actual translation of that sign. Now you go down to the bottom row. I duplicated that second coming block there so we wouldn't lose our place. But in the bottom row, we begin with that Satan being bound. That's the second coming. The resurrection unto life of the saints, the thousand year reign and the resurrection unto damnation of those who are anti-Christ. Believers continue to reign in glory with the Lord. Unbelievers are cast into second death. Then we enter chapter 21 and new heaven and new earth and it's conveyed in three sections. It's broken down into three sections. There's a section of God's words are faithful. There's a section on the New Jerusalem. And then there's a section on docks of glory. So you have faithfulness of God in the new creation, a new heaven and a new earth in the new creation, and the residing docks of glory of God and the new creation. Those are your three closing descriptions of New Jerusalem. It begins with the removal of the Sea of Sorrows. The sea represents the sorrows in existence. They are removed. All, all things are made new for the overcomers who inherit the kingdom of God. Then the New Jerusalem descends from heaven. And we learn that uh, we live in new creation because it is founded on the apostolic ministry of the first century, the precious stones of the apostles who duplicate the uh, breastplate of judgment worn by the priest, Aaron. They represent the new covenant version of the breastplate of judgment which means that we stand before the judgment seat of God with the mercy seat of Jesus Christ as our intercessory salvation. And Christ as a Paschal Lamb becomes the propitiation, the sacrifice as well. He is mercy seat and the blood of sacrifice. 
book of Revelation ends as we know it should end with the doxa glory of the living God. We are changed from glory to glory. We live in the residing doxa glory of God and our spiritual pilgrimage of eternal redemption continues. And it's given a, dy a dynamic term, pilgrimage. Eternal life is a journey of discovery, new things. It's a pilgrimage. It's learning and discovery, and it's dynamic. Don't think of it as a uh, static eternity. It is a dynamic pilgrimage that the book of Revelation tells us represents the eternal reign of Jesus Christ and the New Jerusalem. Like I said, just a quick little timeline summary, but it does show us that uh, the church age will go through the trumpets. From my understanding, my reading, it does not go through the wrath of God. The church is delivered from the wrath, goes through the tribulation, not the extreme wrath of the bulls. And I do believe there is a millennium reign, a thousand year reign. And I do believe that John 5.29 needs to be understood. There are two resurrections. Resurrection unto life and resurrection unto damnation. So that's going to wrap up this uh, timeline, but I hope it gives you just a good snapshot of what we looked at in 51 lessons now. But it's going to wrap up our study of the book of Revelation. And uh, we will discuss our next project in our next meeting.